Today we're going to be talking about how to utilize the Dear Man, a commonly used DBT skill to help with assertive communication. Communication can be really hard sometimes. Sometimes we struggle to communicate our needs with others. This can be out of fear of conflict, fear of anger, or other difficult emotions. Sometimes communication was just not modeled for us when we were kids, or even as adults. Sometimes it's hard to identify and express how we feel or what we need from certain conflicts. Other times we get really caught up in the details and have a hard time just asking for what it is that we need. So what do we do? We practice Dear Man for Assertive Communication. Dear Man is an acronym that we're going to be reviewing today and going through an example of how to use. We use it to communicate our needs, express difficult emotions, and I just want to acknowledge that this might be different from your family or cultural values and can be adjusted so that it's fitting. So how do we do this thing? In our example today, you and your partner often cook at home. Your partner frequently leaves their dishes in the sink after cooking and eating and it bothers you a great deal. This has been going on for a few months and now you finally feel it's time to address the situation. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how do we understand anger, right? Anger can be a really scary emotion and usually our communication around it lies on a scale of somewhere between passive and aggressive. When we're passive, what we're doing is not respecting um, ourself and giving all the respect to the other person. And when we're aggressive, we're not respecting the other person and we're only respecting ourselves. But when we la- land somewhere in the middle, we end up being assertive. We're respectful towards the other person as well as respectful towards ourselves. And that's the whole point of Dear Man, is being assertive and expressing what we need as well as respecting the other person. So starting with the D in dear, describe. What we're gonna wanna do is describe the situation as unbiased as possible. So really trying to stick to the facts. You say that you're gonna do the dishes after you cook. What you could add to this is you say you're gonna do the dishes after you cook, but you frequently don't do that. Really just sticking to the facts, right? Or even if it's happening in that moment. And we wanna get really specific and just use one example or one situation. Express. This is the E in dear. Express your feelings and opinions. I feel frustrated when the dishes are left in the sink overnight. You could add other um, words or feelings in this as well. You don't have to do just one. I feel frustrated. I feel disrespected. I feel hurt. Um, Whatever feels appropriate for you. But in our example, we're going to say, I feel frustrated when the dishes are left in the sink overnight. Assert. This is the A in Dear Man. Assert yourself by asking for what you want clearly or saying no. It depends on the situation. In this case, I would prefer that you do the dishes before going to sleep at night. So you could also say, I would like, or I would appreciate, but we want to use words that are directed towards um, what we do want. R for reinforce. This is the R in the deer. Reinforce the person ahead of time by explaining the positive consequences of them meeting your needs or wants. This is really, really important. Um, Reinforcing how this is gonna benefit both of you uh, or especially for yourself. If you do the dishes before bed, I would feel a lot less stressed in the morning and be far more pleasant to live with, right? So really prompting them for why this would be a beneficial action for them as well. M for man, mindful. Stay focused on your objective. 
This is really, really key, right? You wanna stay focused, you wanna be present in the moment. The person may get angry or change the subject. Stay focused on what you're asking for. So always going back, asserting what you want, right? Reinforcing what you're asking for, and then also reinforcing the positive consequence. So if the person starts saying, uh, going off topic and getting really upset, just always bringing it back. I would really like it if you did do the dishes before bed. And I think I'd be a lot more pleasant to live with, right? Staying focused, being present. Um, along with that, not going on your phone if you feel uncomfortable or um, switching the subject yourself because it seems easier to kind of move along that way. Appear confident. This is the A in man. Remember to appear effective and competent. Sit up tall, maintain eye contact, and use a confident voice. We may not always feel confident, but we can appear confident. So when you're sitting one-on-one -on -one with this person in front of you, we wanna make sure that we're making eye contact, we're sitting up nice and tall, and we're asking for what we need. It may not always feel the most comfortable, but it's a practice. This is the N in man, negotiate. Sometimes we have to give a little to get a little. Focus on what will work and finding a solution. Ask for suggestions and offer other alternatives. Get creative in this moment. Sometimes what we want, the other person can't meet, but we can always meet somewhere in the middle. It's important to hear the other person out and see the situation from their side. Remembering that it's not about being right. It's about feeling heard and asserting ourselves in a way that's appropriate. So if we say, you know, I really want you to clean the dishes before bed every night and the other person says, well, that's not possible, um, especially on the weekends because I'm always out and doing things. Okay, well, what if we could meet in the middle and you agree that you can do this every week during the week? But on the weekends, we'll let it slide. Person says, okay, okay, I think I can do that. That would be a really good example of meeting in the middle or asking them for suggestions. What do you think would work best? What would work for you? You may find that these are more aligned than you previously thought. So when do I use this dear man, right? When do I do this? Assertive communication can be used in multiple settings. We can use it at work, with a boss, we can use it at home, right, school as well, with loved ones or even customer service agents. So what that might look like is if you're at work, telling your boss that you're not available for a certain time or a certain shift, but giving another time that might work better, right? And asserting yourself, especially if you're feeling like maybe, um, you're being taken advantage of or it just doesn't feel like it's working out for you. Not being passive, not being aggressive. At home, as we just kind of use that example, school, right? Maybe you need to take an exam at a certain time with a professor, but you don't feel like you're being heard and you don't want to freak out and yell, on, yell at them. So what we do instead is we do a dear man. Another important aspect of this is to always make sure that it is safe. We want to to avoid risking your safety and well-being, both physical and mental health, right? So making sure that you're doing it with someone that you know it won't cause any kind of detrimental harm. And I wanna leave this opportunity to go over this example that I put up as a dear man. It's a little bit different, but more or less the same, and it's from Therapist Aid, so citing that source. And thank you for joining today.